Hi friends. Um, tonight I wanted to uh, do a quick book chat on the book, latest book that I just finished, um, Mind in Cosmos by Thomas Nagel. I read this book electronically, so there is the cover. Hope that shows up okay, because I kind of got a glare there going on. Um, Mind and Cosmos, Why the Materialist Neo-Darwinian Conception of Nature is Almost Certainly False by Thomas Nagel. <laughs> so this, um, Thomas Nagel is a philosopher at NYU in New York City, and so he wrote this book. Um, I think this book maybe is a couple years ago, old, um, I can't remember exactly what year it was published, but anyway, you're in the last few years. Um, and in the book, he makes, he's a philosopher, so he makes philosophical argument about um, really showing that the dominant, I guess the dominant scientific, reductionist, Darwinian, evolutionary worldview um, that explained that currently is the the, I guess the leading paradigm for a system of knowing how we know and understand the universe, he points out sort of the weaknesses in that, in that dominant um, uh, thought framework. And then by the same token, um, there is this other side, which is more of the theistic, uh, religious, creationist um, Intent, uh, maybe the um, what is that called? Um, design, intelligent design um, paradigm uh, way of knowing is also flawed, and so he spends a lot of time in this book um, explaining why he feels that each of these um, each of these methods are what the flaws are in each of these methods. Um, so I found it, you know, for one, um, it's such a, he was guaranteed, I think, to cause a controversy with this, with this book. And I think there was somewhat of a controversy, I think, um, because the sort of the scientific, um, I guess you could say like scientism, um, people who, are extremely dogmatic adherents of Darwinian evolutionary thought is explains everything. The sort of reductionist uh, physical sciences can explain the entire universe. Um, sort of hold that do that view dogmatically, and they resist any sort of challenge to that that worldview. And then, of course, one of the main challengers, or the main challenger, I think you could say, is this other kind of religious um, worldview that he also finds incomplete. So he actually examines both of them. Um, but he was guaranteed probably to rile up um, sort of the scientific uh, adherence to the scientific current scientific method, physical um, materialist um, reductionism versus, and then he was also going to annoy the creationists and the intelligent design people who are here on this other side because he also discounts their side. Although I think that there have been some creationists, maybe, uh, and intelligent design religious people who have sort of latched on to his uh, message saying CCC um, um, evolutionary uh, theory is doesn't explain everything. And, you know, he makes some really good points. Well, this book is, is you know, it's, it's not necessarily for the general public. So it's a very, very short book. Um, I mean, I don't think, I'm, I think I'm the general public, and I don't think this book was necessarily easy for me to read. As a matter of fact, I know it wasn't easy for me to read. It's about 130 pages, but there are 130 difficult pages to read. I mean, it's... Um, academic language and it's it's philosophic language so it's it's in those terms um but i still i you know i could probably get more from it if i read it through again but um but i you know i i was able to to understand his arguments um for the most part although i did have to go back and backtrack and reread several times like 
what? <laughs> I go like, what What did he just say? Because uh, I didn't quite get what his, the point he was trying to make. But he doesn't provide a new way of thinking. So I think this is kind of important. He really says this up front, that he's not proposing a new um, something to replace these two ways of knowing with. Um, but he just points out that he thinks that both of them are flawed and he thinks that they, he thinks that they should be questioned. And um, he is not, he comes out and says he is an atheist, so he's not definitely not on the side of the religious intelligent design people. Um, but I think he wants to challenge the scientific community where this view of materialist reductionism is so prevalent and is really dogmatically not challenged. Um, and he wants to challenge, um, I think he's trying to challenge this, uh, try, ch trying to challenge scientists to think outside of that. Um, I don't want to use the word paradigm. He never used the word paradigm in this book, and for some reason I keep using it. But um, he he wants to challenge that, um, that I guess, reign the dominant uh, thought pattern because he thinks it's um, it doesn't explain things and he calls it he has a term for it I think he calls it maybe like evolution of the gaps so anything that's not explained is sort of skimmed over and he spends most of his time um, most of his arguments are actually based on consciousness and mind um, as a philosopher this might be you know what he would naturally be drawn to as to show why evolutionary reductionism doesn't necessarily fit mind and doesn't fit consciousness in his view and his arguments his arguments that he makes and um, he uh, he acknowledges that physical materialist reductionism can explain like the structures of the mind like the brain but the actual rationality and reasoning um, of the of it of of a conscious being like a human, um, evolution doesn't explain well. Um, and then um, yeah, so uh, and then moral. He also talks about morals and values, um, and how some of that behavior can be explained um, for survival. Uh, that argument can be made, like social societal cooperation leads to morals or whatever but um he feels like it's not a satisfactory complete response and you know i found all of those arguments very plausible so i am uh you know that was my big takeaway from the book i have probably come from a background of sort of not questioning um this sort of reductionism materialist reductionism materialism and reductionism myself um, until fairly recently and it was not this book that actually caused me to start reevaluating that it was a book called whole um, which I I read electronically um, a couple of years ago and I'm just going to show you um, the cover of that so you can take a quick quick look at this because this book changed how I thought not just about nutrition which is what this book's about but really about reductionism in general and um, this is the book Whole. Um, oh, got that glare again because it's a white cover, so it's really hard to. Oops. Um, the book Whole is by T. Colin Campbell, PhD, um, and it's Whole Rethinking the Science of Nutrition. And I really wish you could see that better. Maybe that's better. So it's enough to read. Read it just so you can get kind of what it looks like. This book really, really, really illustrated to me the flaws in in in, science, in reductionism, because um, nutrition is another one of the sciences that has been subjected to reductionist uh, inquiry, and nutrition is one of those uh, sciences that probably would benefit from a more holistic. Um, uh, way of knowing or a way of exploring because what nutrition when you take a food and break it down into its component parts the food is actually more than the sum of its component parts so when you 
eat an apple, for example, which they use in the book. Um, it's more than just, you know, what we normally think of in terms of our food, like what's on the label, like vitamin C, you know, protein, you know, it's, it's far more complex than that. There are hundreds of, of phytonutrients and, um, phytochemicals in an apple and they cause all sorts of reactions. You have this huge cascade of reactions and you can't just replicate that by taking it apart into its constituent pieces because its pieces depend on what you eat with it, depends on when it was grown, each apple is a little individual and different. Um, so it's just, um, that really illustrated to me, I don't want to go into that book too much, but I, I think for me, that really illustrated to me um, flaws in reductionism. Um, and he, and uh, Dr. Campbell in this book, uh, Hole, actually discusses the flaws in reductionism and how reductionism has actually impaired um, nutritional science and this sort of dogma to reductionism as the only way of knowing continues to hold back the science of nutrition in his view. And this is the point that Thomas Nagel is making about evolution um, evolutionary theory and uh, materialist reductionism holding back the physical sciences because there's no question that there's that that's that this sort of materialist reductionism has advanced science enormously but it can't explain everything and so he thinks that um eventually our, we will reach a point humans will reach a point where we need to move beyond that and that's basically his his um, ending argument. Um, he doesn't, like I said, he doesn't propose a new way of thinking or a, an alternative. He just says, he just points out the, the flaws in the current um, in the current thinking. So, um, overall, this is a book that probably you can get this information elsewhere. Uh, just look up some, maybe some interviews with him. Like I said, it's only 130 pages. If you want to actually read his philosophical arguments in detail then you know by all means the book would be would be for you it's very short like i said but it's 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 definitely a complicated complex 130 pages to read so i did enjoy it um it has it had a place for me i read it at the right time it, it, i found it interesting and i'm glad i read it um so I can recommend it on that level. So that's it. Um, I just wanted to touch base about that. It's the last book I read of 2015. And um, until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Bye.